Welcome to Monroe Regional Medical Center's nationally recognized and awarded Monroe Heart Program. At Monroe Regional, we provide a patient-centered team approach and you, the patient, are the most important member of the team. This video will help you and your loved ones to better understand and what to expect before, during, and after your surgery. Your surgeon has scheduled you to repair your abdominal aortic aneurysm. An abdominal aortic aneurysm is a weakened wall of the aorta that causes it to enlarge and potentially rupture. There are two ways in which an abdominal aneurysm can be repaired, either with an endovascular stent or an open aneurysm repair. Your surgeon and cardiologist will determine which option is best for you. For an endovascular stent, a cardiac surgeon and an invasive cardiologist will perform the procedure. A small incision is made in either one or both growings and on occasion can be done without an incision. The graft is then inserted into the femoral artery and positioned in the abdominal aorta within the aneurysm. The surgery requires an overnight stay in the cardiovascular intensive care unit with an anticipated discharge the following morning. The other type of surgery is an open abdominal repair. This involves a midline abdominal incision followed by an incision into your aorta and placement of the graft. This surgery is more invasive and the recovery period is longer and more involved with a hospital stay of approximately four to five days. Please note there are times when the surgeon may have to switch from doing an endovascular repair to an open abdominal repair. For this reason, you will be prepared as if you were having an open abdominal surgical repair. Both surgeries will take approximately two hours. Prior to surgery, you will be met with an anesthesiologist who will review your medical history as it pertains to anesthesia. The anesthesiologist will also discuss with you various methods of post-operative pain control and review your medications. You will also be scheduled for pre-operative testing and education. Your pre-operative testing will include blood work, EKG, chest x-ray, urinalysis, and nasal swab to screen for MRSA. MRSA is a type of staph bacteria that people can harbor in their nose without having any ill effects. But if it becomes more active in your body or incision after surgery, it is more difficult to treat. For this reason, we are being proactive in screening for these bacteria. If your nasal screening comes back positive, you will be treated with an antibacterial ointment in your nose for three days. Surgery may be delayed for this treatment. You will receive instruction on how to shower before your surgery using a special antimicrobial cleanser and where to purchase this special cleanser. Showering several times before surgery with the cleanser helps reduce the risk of infection by decreasing the surface bacteria on your skin. First, pour the liquid cleanser directly on your hand rather than a washcloth. Then apply it to your body from your chin down to your toes. Let it stay on your body for two minutes and then rinse off thoroughly. Do not use this cleanser on your face or your hair. For those areas, use your normal soap and shampoo. Do not apply anything to your skin afterwards, such as lotions, powders, colognes, or aftershave products. You will be given an incentive spirometer, also called IS for short. This is a very useful tool to help minimize the risk of pneumonia after surgery. When using the IS, Position yourself in the most upright position possible for optimal chest expansion. To begin, first exhale fully, then immediately place the tube in your mouth and inhale with a slow, deep breath. There are two chambers to observe on your spirometer. The smaller chamber monitors technique. Taking a slow breath will keep your meter within the clear area on your spirometer, which is exactly where we would like it. The larger chamber measures volume. We would like you to inhale as deeply as possible until you reach your maximum breath. A piston will rise in the chamber as you breathe in. Once you have taken your maximum breath, then remove the tube from your mouth and exhale normally. We will mark this volume on your spirometer. This will be your goal after surgery. We will have you demonstrate and practice using your spirometer prior to your surgery so you become familiar with its use. Aneurysm repairs require a bowel prep. For this reason, you will be on a clear liquid diet for one day prior to your surgery and you will be asked to take strong laxatives at 12 noon the day before surgery. You will drink the entire bottle of the magnesium citrate. 
which has a citrus sour taste. It may be poured over ice, mixed with clear liquid, or taken straight from the bottle. When you come to Monroe for your surgery, we ask that you leave all valuables at home. You will not be allowed to eat or drink anything after midnight, including gum, mints, and water. No makeup, jewelry, or nail polish is to be worn, and do not bring any medications with you to the hospital. You will be given the hospital gowns to wear. Please bring your own toiletries and a pair of non-skid footies. We are often asked about our surgery schedule. The operative schedule is not made out until the evening before surgery. Even if your surgery is not the first one scheduled, you will still be asked to arrive early at the hospital since the surgical schedule can be unpredictable. You may want to bring a book or something that helps relax you until you are taken to the pre-operative holding area, where an IV will be placed, hairs around the surgical site will be clipped, and medications to relax you are given. One person may stay with you in this area until you are taken to the operating room. Your family member will be escorted to the surgical waiting room once you are taken into surgery. After surgery is complete, your surgeon will speak with your family in the surgical waiting room. Please ask your family members to bring a sweater since the waiting room can be cool. It may be up to two hours after surgery before your family can visit with you. Once visitation is allowed, a nurse will escort your family from the waiting room to your bedside in cardiovascular intensive care. Visitation is limited in the cardiovascular intensive care unit or CVICU to two people at a time. The nurse will guide you on the frequency and duration of visitation. Each visit will usually be 10 to 15 minutes. Cell phones, food or drink, children under the age of 12, and overnight visits are not permitted. Fruit baskets and flowers are not allowed. You will stay in the intensive care unit for a minimum of one night. Your family will need to have your PIN number available when calling the hospital for information regarding your recovery. This number will have been provided to you in advance of surgery. The PIN number is meant to be given to just one person who will serve as the family spokesperson. That spokesperson can then pass that information on to other family and friends. This helps control the privacy of your health information and allows the nurse to remain focused on your bedside care. At the importance of minimizing the risk of infections, we ask that all of our visitors help by utilizing the hand sanitizers located in the hallways and each room. Please use these sanitizers upon entering and leaving during your visitations. After your surgery, some of the tubes that you will have include a special IV in your neck, an arterial line in your wrist to monitor your blood pressure, and a Foley catheter that drains your urine. In most cases, you will have a breathing tube that is connected to a ventilator. As you begin to awaken from anesthesia, listen to your nurse as they will be working towards getting this tube out as quickly as possible. Your nurse will remove the breathing tube when you can breathe well enough without the assistance of the ventilator. If you have had an open aneurysm repair, you will have a nasogastric tube that keeps your stomach empty. It will be removed once your bowel sounds return, which may take two to three days. Your nurse will be able to give you a small amount of ice chips to help with the dryness, but too many ice chips may cause nausea and vomiting. You will start to use your spirometer in the cardiovascular intensive care unit after the breathing tube is removed. We will ask you to take 10 slow, deep breaths every hour, followed by a strong, effective cough. This strong cough will help mobilize secretions in your lungs. Hugging a pillow will help support your incision, minimizing the discomfort. Having a pillow handy when you start using the IS, as it sometimes triggers a cough reflex, will help with your first breath. Practice using your spirometer prior to surgery. The day after surgery, endovascular stent patients will be given breakfast and be prepared to be discharged home between 8 o'clock a.m. and 11 o'clock a.m. directly from the cardiovascular intensive care unit. Patients who have had an open abdominal repair will usually transfer out of the cardiovascular intensive care unit on their first post-op day. You will continue receiving IV fluids during this time. When your bowel sounds return, you will be started on a clear liquid diet and then advanced to a regular diet as tolerated. Once you are transferred to the fourth floor patient room, your family will be able to spend more time with you in your room. Several tubes will be removed prior to transfer. You will still feel quite tired and will doze frequently. You will be sitting up in a recliner for most of the day. However, between the hours of 2 and 4 p.m., you will be returned to bed for rest. The nurses and doctors will remain out of your room unless you need them. 
The lights will be dimmed in the hallway, and you may have one person with you at this time if they too are resting and are quiet. Be sure to inform all other potential visitors not to visit between these hours. It is important for you to request your pain medication so your pain is controlled well enough so that you may be able to cough and deep breathe effectively and walk more comfortably since this will help in your recovery. We want you to be a well-informed and well-educated patient. Please be sure to ask questions and understand all that is being done for you. Before you are discharged, know any new medications, what they are for, and their side effects. There is no driving until your post-op appointment with your surgeon. Your doctor wants you to shower daily, take walks, increase your activity as tolerated, use your pain medications as prescribed, and eat healthy. You may even go out to dinner if you feel up to it. We also offer a heart-healthy nutrition class at our Lifetime Fitness Center. Now is a good time to think about your lifestyle and look at ways to make it healthier. Here at Monroe Heart, you will be in the hands of a very competent cardiovascular team. We all care about helping you and your family through this entire surgical process and hospitalization. Thank you for choosing Monroe Regional Medical Center.